Moikka kaikille! Mun nimi on Raakel. Englanniksi Rachel. Tervetuloa! Today I wanted to talk to you about different culture shocks and things that were difficult for me to adjust to when I lived in Finland for four years. As a Texas girl moving to Turku, Finland, these are the things that I experienced to be a bit challenging while I was there. Some of these things might not be actual like culture shocks but maybe just something that I had to get used to and it took time for me to adjust to when I moved to Finland. Coming from Texas, Finland was like night and day. It was really different for me and it was definitely a life-changing experience which I am so grateful for. Before I moved to Finland, I didn't know exactly where Finland was. I didn't uh, know anything about the country so I had to look it up on a map. Other than traveling to Mexico, when I was in my 20s, I hadn't really been outside of the United States. I've traveled all inside of the United States, but never outside. So not only was I going to a different country for the first time that wasn't connected to my country, but I was actually moving there. So I didn't have a lot of expectations. I knew it was going to be cold um, given where it's located. And so in my mind, I did kind of expect that there would be like, igloos maybe the eskimo looking people you know with the fur like big gray coats on and stuff like that and polar bears but as far as expectations that's about like all i had really expected i had heard that everything in europe was smaller from people who had traveled there before com you know smaller compared to how things are in the United States and it's true that everything is bigger in Texas everything is bigger in the United States but everything is much bigger in Texas and that I found that to be true here are 10 things that were either a culture shock to me or were just it was just difficult for me to adjust to and or maybe it was just something that was really different the first thing would be was um, taking off my shoes at the door we've always my whole life like worn shoes in the house never even thought about it um, even during the rainy seasons here you know you just wipe them off on the doormat before you come in and it never was given any thought to take your shoes off all of my childhood and growing up like homes that I ever was in had carpeted floors and in Finland the floors were either plastic or vinyl or something like that and then I learned okay you have to take your shoes off at the door and I learned is you know the weather and it helps to keep the floors cleaner it made a lot of sense it took some time to get used to because I was so used to wearing my shoes inside the house I can't tell you how many times I heard Raquel can got boys oh bella I had to hear that over and over from repetition to learn but now that's so ingrained in me that I actually brought that habit back with me to the States when I moved back. And because it's logical, it makes sense. You don't have to clean your floors as much because you take your shoes off at the door and therefore you eliminate a lot of the dirt and debris and all of the crap that gets brought in with it. So to me, I think that's amazing. That makes so much sense. I'm glad that I picked up that habit. Hopefully I've been inspiring people here to do the same. So as you can see now in our RV, we have some carpeted floor, but we're going to be taking that up and put some uh, laminate or vinyl floors down, something like that, because I just think it's much more practical. Practical. That's like one of the other things I learned. Living in Finland is practicality. Number two would be greeting or smiling at strangers. Coming from Texas, you greet everyone. Like you go into the convenience store and you're like, hi, how are you? How's your day going? the small talk kind of stuff that Finnish people really don't like. So I grew up doing that, you know, you just, you pass by someone and you're like, you smile, you make eye contact, you greet them, you might, and you ask them, how are you, how's your day going? And you may or may, you know, like, you already know, it's assumed you're not gonna sit there and talk to them. It's the way that we greet each other here. And so when I first went into a store in Finland, into a convenience store, and I was checking out, like I said to the clerk, I'm like, hi, how are you? And he looked at me like I was some crazy drunken woman. He looked almost frightened when I said it to him. And I was just like, oh, okay, that wasn't awkward at all. You know, cause he didn't answer me or anything. He just looked at me like, like I was crazy. And so, 
from thin on out, I realized, okay, maybe <laughs> things are going to be a little bit different here and I don't need to greet people if it's going to like freak them out. I was told that like in Finland, two people could use the same bus stop for two years every morning, go to work at the same time every morning for two years and never know each other's name. In the whole two years, they never learned each other's names because they don't really talk to strangers. And after living there for four years, I really do believe that that's true. <laughs> Number three. The first time I went into a grocery store in Finland and I bought something and I was waiting for them to put it in my bag and they didn't put it in the bag. So in Finland, they don't give you bags. You have to buy your own bag or you bring your own bag. And that was completely new to me. Like I just did not understand that at all. Like why, why do I have, so I have to just carry my stuff out like I have to pay for a bag you know it's like what 10 cents or something like that it's not even like a big deal but for me coming from here where everything's just kind of like convenient and available like at first it was it was a shock to me I was like why do I have to pay for my own bag like I'm buying this stuff here why do I have to buy my own bag this doesn't make any sense and so but regardless to say like I got used to it I started to bring my own bags to the store every time that I went to the store and that is another habit that I have carried over to here because I did not realize how wasteful we are in the stores here like they will literally put like you go to Walmart they will literally put one or two items in one bag one plastic bag and give it to you you could buy maybe 10 things and sometimes they even come out with like seven bags you know what I mean like it's crazy the amount of waste that goes on here and I didn't realize that because I grew up around it and it was so it was normal to me I'm really happy that nowadays I can see you know I'm more aware of like my how much I waste what I use and and everything like that and I attribute that to my wonderful beautiful Finland experience I think it's great when they encourage you to bring your own bags because that eliminates waste, it eliminates this unnecessary nonsense plastic bags which I have grown to hate plastic and in fact like Corey and I are on a mission, my husband and I are on a mission, we are like we have a goal to phase out as much plastic out of our lives as possible starting with straws because I don't want them to end up in some sea turtles nose I'm tired of seeing those videos like that it's just really sad to me it's great there that they you know charge you for a bag because you're less likely to just like throw something away that you just paid for or you bring your own bag which just totally eliminates the whole need for a plastic bag anyway I think that's awesome Four. that would be the awkward silence that's actually okay and normal in Finland that for me was like probably one of the most outstanding weird experiences that I had when I lived there I met a lady at a church meeting and we exchanged emails and um, some week later maybe I got an email from her and she was like hi it was really nice to meet you I was wondering if you would like to go on a coffee you know with me but if you don't like don't worry about it I don't want to impose like I'm not at all trying to like impose on you so if you don't want to I completely understand so I told I wrote back and I was like yeah sure I'll go and so I went on the coffee date and we sat down and <laughs> I think she got something to eat and I got something to eat and uh, we each paid for our own which was like different here because sometimes here like if you ask someone to go with you somewhere like on a coffee or out to eat or something like that unless it's said beforehand most of the time like the person that said the they gave the invitation would pay for both I mean that's not every single time but that's just been my experience most of the time here and so that was kind of different and I didn't expect her to pay for it anyway but that was just like a slight difference that I noticed there because we went out and like she paid for her own I paid for mine and that was totally cool the weird part was when we sat down and we didn't really know each other and honestly I'm a bit introverted and shy myself like when meeting strangers I'm not a social person I don't know how to just I'm not good at small talk so in that way like I am kind of like very Finnish because I, I hate small talk I really don't like it it's boring to me like I would just rather not have a conversation if there's gonna be small talk but at the same time like I'm not good at um, diving deep with someone either in the first time I meet you and getting to know someone like I've 
I just don't have a lot of experience doing that. And so, yeah, that was kind of awkward. And so it was just silent. And I'm thinking like the whole time, like, oh my gosh, like I'm ruining this. You know, I'm, I don't know what to say. Like, what am I supposed to ask? Like, um, how's the weather like where you live? You know, what do you think about the weather? Like talking about the weather or some, something dumb and dull like that. Uh, but those really superficial questions, like when I would ask them, she would answer like very shortly, like, do you like the cold weather? Like, does it, do you like living here in Finland? It doesn't bother me. Okay, next question, you know, and then it's like I ask the question and I get a short answer and I'm just like, this isn't going anywhere. And for me, coming from Texas, like there's, it's weird, unless you're with family, it's really, really weird and awkward to have like this long period of silence. And so it was just silent. And I'm thinking in my mind that this is going horribly and that I'm just like blowing it. And this woman probably thinks that I'm like boring as heck. And I find out later that actually that is quite normal with Finnish people and that she probably like had a great time. And then I also found out that it was probably very hard for her to be the first person to reach out and give the invitation to go have coffee because Typically, like, I think in Finland, people don't normally make that, like, first initial step to do it, if I understood right. That was definitely different for me. And then just to be around Finnish people and have them sit and there's, like, you go, wait, so wait, you go to someone's house to hang out with them, but you just sit on the couch and you're just quiet? Like, you don't talk? Like, you just sit there with one another? And that's normal. Okay. It's weird because I don't like small talk, but at the same time, I don't like weird, awkward silences. But again, I learned from it and I learned that it's actually okay to not have the atmosphere and air filled with a bunch of useless, nonsense small talk, so. Number five, being punctual. It is very important to Finnish people that you're on time and that you're punctual. Like if you say you're gonna be there at a certain time or they ask you to be there at a certain time, please be there at that time. First time that um, a family had us over for dinner, I was really, really late, like 20 minutes late. And here it's like fine, like if you're gonna be late, you just like give someone a call and be like, hey, I'm running late, it's no big deal. 10 minutes late, I'll see you in 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, it's not a big deal. Let them know that I was running late and then not, on top of running late, like I got lost. And so I was even later than what I was gonna be. So it was about 20 minutes late and then I got there and I could tell that they were really offended like they were pretty upset they're they're pretty mad they're smiling oh hi we're glad you made it but it was just kind of like this awkward like tension for a little bit and I learned later that it's actually because I was late and it's important to be punctual there number six in Finland when you make a purchase you buy something the tax is already added in to the total of what you're gonna pay. Here, when you buy something in Texas, the tax is 8.25%. So when you buy something, tax is gonna be added on top of that. For example, in Finland, you buy something and it's it's marked on the shelf, uh, one euro and 99 cents. Like, I don't think they price stuff there like that, but I can't remember off the top of my head like some of the prices, but. Just for an example, 1.99 euros. When you go to check out, it's gonna, you're gonna pay 1.99 euros. They don't add the tax like at the register. Here in Texas, all over the United States, but in Texas we have an 8.25% sales tax, which they add at the register. So on the shelf, it might be marked $1.99, but when you get to the register, on top of that $1.99, they're going to add an 8.25% sell tax, sales tax. So you can't ever really know like how much it's gonna cost. I mean, you can if you wanna sit there and do the math on all of your stuff uh, before you get to the register, which by the way, some of it 
isn't taxable. Food items aren't taxable here, I don't think. And so you don't really know for sure how much it's going to be um, beforehand, before you check out and they ring you up and then they tell you your total. And I think to me that's just kind of nonsense. Like after living in Finland, I think it's great. Like you you see how much it costs and that's how much you're going to pay. And I'm like, why can't we do that here? And it took me a while to get used to that because I was so used to like in my mind, like trying to add it up. So I know like, okay, am I going to have enough? Like I know it says it's a dollar 50, but a dollar 50 plus 8.25, like, you know, who wants to do all that junk? It's unnecessary. Like why can't we adopt some of the ways of Finland here? I mean, it's just more simple and it's logical and it just makes a lot more sense. All right. Number seven, like they weren't kidding when they said everything is smaller in Europe. Everything is smaller. The apartment that I lived in there was, if I remember right, 65 square meters. And that's actually kind of small compared to what I was used to and what I had grown up in and apartments that I had lived in myself living in Texas. So it was a little bit like frustrated in the beginning because growing up with having a lot of space you think you need a lot of space but I'm glad that I got to experience um, that because it has helped me to become more of a minimalist and to be able to be happier with less space happier with less because you have to get rid of you can't have a lot of crap and um a small space like that I mean you can but I mean who won't? I don't want to do that it's like took me some time to get used to I was complaining about it in the beginning I wasn't happy about it was so small and it was so crammed and all this stuff and looking back like who I am today like to that person who lived in Finland I'm like if you only knew how different you would be because <laughs> like, here I am now living in an RV which is way smaller than any Finnish apartment that I was ever in and I'm in here feeling like this is a bit excessive for me it's like even too much space for us now we're even thinking about downsizing into a smaller like trailer that we can just pull with my car so I don't know we'll see where that goes but yeah I think it's funny that um, <laughs> 65 square meters was too small for me, but now, you know, like I'm living in this tiny, tiny space and and I love it and it doesn't feel tiny to me. But everything was smaller there. The apartments were smaller there. The, the portions were smaller there. And I think that that's great because here you can, with the amount of food that they give you when you go out to eat is literally enough food for two people. There's no way that I can ever eat like a full meal when I go out when I go out to eat, that I can eat like a full plate of what they give me here when I'm in Texas. I always have to take it with me, half of it or three quarters of it, to take it with me um, because I can't finish it. And But in Finland, it was like an adequate amount. So you pay, you know, it might be more expensive there, but like it doesn't encourage a lot of the overeating that goes on here in America. And I'm, I'm not trying to be rude, I just didn't see obesity as much as a problem being as much as a problem as it is here in the states yeah so everything is smaller there the cars were smaller there um i think i saw maybe two pickup trucks like the whole four years that i lived there and that was pretty exciting because i mean it was like a rarity and i'm like wow pickup truck i feel like i'm back in texas it was great number eight ceiling fans I actually really didn't like that about Finland was that there were no ceiling fans. I grew up in a house, we had ceiling fans in every room, not the bathroom or kitchen, but living room and all the bedrooms, we had ceiling fans. And I just grew up with a fan and it that's how I fell asleep. I like to feel the air like moving on me. And it was really hard for me to get used to sleeping there without a fan. Um, the air just felt so still and stagnant, even if I would open a window. Um, it just didn't feel the same and so that took a lot of getting used to but once I moved back to Texas I was already used to it and so then I quit using a ceiling fan so it's all which for me was like so much of what I had grew up knowing as normal and had gotten used to and I easily adjusted there and then continued on with those habits once I moved back here number nine would be the constant darkness and then in the summer it was like constant light 
you know, by the time your body got acclimated to one, here comes the season for the other. And so that was extremely difficult for me. Um, the light so much wasn't as difficult as the darkness was for me. And then for, for those of you that don't know, in Finland, because of where it is geographically, on the same latitude as Alaska, um, in northern, way northern Finland, like all winter, like they don't have any sunlight. And then in the summer, they have like no nighttime at all. And, uh, but like in the lo in southern Finland where I live, just really, really long, dark days during the winter. And then in the summer, it was like really, really long, bright days where the sun didn't go down. That was hard to get used to. But at the same time, it was like kind of exciting because I had never experienced anything like that. And it was so different. And so I was like, this is cool. But my body was saying like, no, it's not. Like I was, I stayed extremely tired all of the time during the winter and it was hard because I was in Finnish classes and I was trying to learn this really difficult language while battling like this tiredness and fatigue that um, came from not getting any sunlight and adequate vitamin D and all of that. Probably one of the harder things for me. So here we go, number 10. The Turkulainen sense of humor. Yeah. So you ask someone in Turku, Hey, how are you? How was your day? It's not terrible. It's not bad. It's not the worst day that I had. Because when you say that to me, it's like, oh, if I ask you, like, how was your day? And you're like, it's not the worst. You think, to me, that translates, you were having a bad day. Like, what's going on? Did something happen? Like, what's going on? Do you need to talk? <laughs> that's what it translates to me. So that's not, not so much like their sense of humor, but more so like they have this like, they have this very different um, kind of sarcasm. Like just this way of communication, it was just like really different. They have this kind of like dark sense of humor and just almost twisted. All right, so these were 10 things that were either culture shocks to me or things that I found difficult to get adjusted to. Some of them, many of them in the end, I'm glad that I did get adjusted to in their habits that I carried back home with me. And I'm grateful for have learning them. I have 10 more things that I would like to share with you. And so there's gonna be a part two to this video. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you would like to hear the part two things of nomad lifestyle, living off grid, um, living outside the box, living alternatively, and videos about Finland. If that's interesting to you, you might wanna subscribe. Hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get notified each time that I upload a video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please take a minute to leave a comment. I, I get so super excited when people leave comments because one of my main goals for being on here on YouTube is to connect to people and so when you leave a comment I, I always reply to all of my comments it just makes me feel like I connect with you more and so and YouTube also doesn't tell me like every person that subscribes to me which is like sad because I would like to know who you are so I could say hello and thank you for your support and to connect with you so if you have subscribed to my channel and you haven't ever left a comment would you consider just so that I can say hi to you and thanks again for watching and keep an eye out for part number two.